IBD is a group of chronic, progressive, inflammatory diseases. During the disease course, patients would experience periods of active disease or flares when symptoms worsen. Steroids are commonly prescribed to induce remission during these flares. They are highly effective in reducing symptoms and restoring normality to patients' lives. They work fast and are readily available and economical. However, long-term steroid use is known to be associated with adverse events. They include infections, venous thromboembolism, reduced bone density and fracture, as well as chronic diseases such as diabetes mellitus, hypertension, osteoporosis and cataracts. Even short-term use of steroids is associated with two to five-fold increases in acute adverse events that result in major morbidity and mortality. Therefore, steroids should only be used sparingly. In fact, according to the latest ECHO guidelines, excess steroid exposure may be defined as requiring more than two courses of steroids within the preceding 12 months, steroid continuation after flaring on steroid tapering, or within three months of stopping steroids. A recent study in over a thousand IBD patients in the UK found that 14% of patients are receiving excess steroids. This means that more than one in 10 patients are at an increased risk of adverse events that can result in major morbidity and mortality. Because these patients are receiving steroids and may be feeling symptom free, we could be missing important clues about their underlying inflammation that are ultimately contributing to disease progression. What can we do then to ensure our patients are not being exposed to excess steroids? We need to actively and regularly assess each patient's steroid exposure. If a patient has received two courses of steroids within a 12 month period, including any prescribed by other clinics, or flares within three months of stopping steroid treatment, we need to assess whether it is appropriate for the patient to escalate therapy. And of course, we need to combine this with tight monitoring to ensure disease control is achieved without over-treating or under-treating the patient. In summary, steroids are a viable treatment option in IBD and very effective in inducing remission, but they should not be repeatedly prescribed or used for prolonged periods. Instead, we should monitor closely for steroid dependence and rapidly escalate patients onto effective therapies to help avoid repeated disease flares, disease progression, and to help prevent unnecessary, irreversible bowel damage.